Hello folks. So in this uh, previous video, I explained the neural networks and in there I mentioned about uh, activation functions. That is a function in which we passed weighted sum of all the nodes in the neural network. And in this video, I'm going to talk uh, specifically about activation function, which is an important component when it comes to desired output of a neural network, given an input or set of input. Okay, so activation function provides a non-linearity to the uh, neural networks. And I will also uh, explain, uh, in fact, uh, how we can, uh, you know, use these activation functions in neural network, as well as what are the different types of activation functions. So folks, this is Nitin, who is on a mission to democratize the artificial intelligence, big data Hadoop, cloud computing and blockchain to the entire world. And with this aim, I am regularly creating the associated content and publishing it as well on a periodic basis in order to make it available for the entire community who wants to learn these modern technologies. Uh, you can subscribe to my channel or press the bell icon uh, to keep on getting the latest updates regarding hottest technologies of 21st century. You can also follow me on Twitter and Facebook at the links given over. And I have also added subtitles uh, in languages like Hindi, English and French for your convenience. So you can enable them as per your needs. In artificial neural network, the activation functions help in uh, you know, uh, deciding whether a neuron should be activated or not by using the weighted sum with an added bias in it. Their main purpose is to convert an input signal of a node in an artificial neural network to an output signal that is determining the output of neural network uh, like yes or no, I mean, those kind of responses. Uh, let's revisit a part of previous video where I briefly covered activation function. So we took the weighted sum of each connection which was directed towards the same neuron in the hidden layer and passed that weighted sum to the activation function. The activation function then performs uh, you know, some transformation on the sum to a number between you know, some lower cutoff value and a upper cutoff value. So let me uh, now take a real life example to explain activation function so that it can be understood in a better way. Folks, there are people who are very fond of chocolates. So whenever they see or smell chocolates, there are few neurons in their brain which gets fired or activated as well as in fact, there are few people who don't like broccoli. Okay, so whenever they see or smell uh, broccoli, a different set of neurons gets fired or activated. So in their brain, uh, based on these stimuli, uh, certain neurons gets fired and certain others, uh, other neurons doesn't get fired at all. So in mathematical terms, uh, if a neuron gets fired, then it is represented by one. And if it is not fired, then it is represented by zero. So activation functions in artificial neural network can have neurons whose values are in between zero and one. Okay. And if the value is closer to one, then it means that more activated uh, that neuron is. And if it is, uh, if the value is closer to zero, so the zero value represents that less activated that neuron is. Hence, we apply activation function fx so as to you know make the network more powerful and uh, add ab ability to it uh, to learn something complex and complicated, as well as generating non-linearity in the output of the neuron. Okay. So now let me cover four different types of activation functions which are widely used in building artificial neural networks or all the other different types of neural networks like convolution or recurrent neural network. Okay, so number one in the list is sigmoid or logistic function. So let's first visualize the sigmoid functions. Okay, so here you can see this sigmoid function. So sigmoid function is the function which has a lower limit of zero and upper limit of one. 
and sigmoid function takes an input value and transform it into uh, transform it to uh, you know uh, close to zero if that input value is negative in nature if let's say the input is positive value then sigmoid function transforms it very close to one and if the input value is zero then the sigmoid function will transform it uh, into some value between zero and one so sigmoid activation uh, basically suffers from vanishing gradient problem so vanishing gradient problem uh, is a topic which i'm going to cover in the later video so for this video just remember that uh, sigmoid activation uh, function suffers from vanishing gradient problem so number two in the list is tan h or hyperbolic tangent function so let's first see the visual form of uh, tan h function so here you can see the uh, you know uh, the visual associated with this tan h function and like the logistic uh, function uh, or sigmoid uh, logistic sigmoid function the tan h function is also s shaped but instead output uh, you know values uh, that ranges from minus 1 to 1 okay so that's the difference and logistic sigmoid can cause a neural network to get stuck during training okay so please remember that it is due to the fact that if a strongly negative input is provided to the logistic sigmoid it outputs values uh, very near to zero and tanh function caters this problem because it has values between uh, minus one and one so strong negative inputs to the tanh will map to negative outputs okay and if the value of input uh, is zero then tanh activation function transform it to near zero outputs so this is the reason they are less likely to get stuck during training and one more thing so tanh also suffers from vanishing gradient problem so point to remember now the third uh, activation function in the list is relu function uh, relu stands for rectilinear uh, li uh, rectified linear units and it is a type of activation function uh, you know so basically um, it is a type of function where um, you know we can define a function mathematically we can define it as y equals to max of 0 uh, comma x so visually it looks like the following diagram okay so a general problem with both the sigmoid and tanh function is that they saturate uh, you know they saturate meaning that large values uh, snap to one point or one uh, in fact and small uh, values snap to minus one so i repeat uh, the large values snap to one and small values snap to minus one or zero for tan h and sigmoid respectively both sigmoid and tan h are really sensitive to changes around their midpoint of their input such as 0.5 because 0.5 is a midpoint for uh, sigmoid okay and 0 for tanh which is 0 is obviously midpoint between um, a midpoint in the tanh because the value lies from minus 1 to 1 so 0 is the midpoint of their input okay to overcome these issues we use relu functions okay the main advantage of relu function over their activation function is that uh, or over other activation function is that it does not activate all the neurons at the same time okay now you might be wondering uh, what does that actually mean so if you look at the relu function you will see that if the input is negative or zero then it will convert it to zero okay and the neuron does not get activated this means that at a time only a few neurons are activated making the networks sparse uh, thereby making it efficient and easy for computation and if the input is uh, other than zero or other than less than zero then it will return the same value and it is due to the fact that uh, it is depicted by y equals to x so relu doesn't suffer from vanishing gradient problem now the fourth and last one in the list is uh, you know a uh, a softmax function so let's first visualize the softmax function so here it is so the softmax function is also type of sigmoid function but it is generally used in classification problems 
the sigmoid function is able to handle just two classes but if we have more than two classes to classify then we use software softmax function okay and the software uh, function uh, divides the outputs for each class between 0 and 1 creating individual probability of input being in particular class so if you add the probabilities of the classes then it should come as 1 and the combined values should come as 1 so let's take an example uh, let's say we have uh, the outputs as uh, you know 0.85 another one is 1.4 and the third one is 0 0.30. Now, when we apply the softmax function, we would get, let's say, hypothetically, uh, the probabilities as 0.56, uh, the second one as 0.25, and third one as 0.19. So now we can use these probabilities for the value to be in each class. Okay. The software function, so here we can uh, visualize that we have only three classes, okay, because we are seeing three probability values. So we can uh, now we can use these uh, as probabilities for the value to be in each class okay and the software function is ideally used in the output layer of the classifier where we are actually trying to attain the probabilities to define the class of each input okay so folks this is it for this video to conclude i explained activation functions in detail as well as covered four mostly use activation functions like softmax sigmoid 10h and relu so folks let me ask you a question from the uh, from today's video uh, okay and uh, which is which activation function returns zero when the input is either zero or less than zero please post your comments in the comment section given below because some of the most uh, or best tips and feedback come from you only and if you're watching this video and you are not already a subscriber to our channel, consider clicking that little subscribe button. And in case you have already subscribed, then click on the bell icon to receive the notifications whenever I will release a new video. So thanks for hanging out with me, guys. I will be covering next topic in the upcoming videos. So keep on watching. Thank you.